You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi, welcome back to Retro Recollections. Today I've got my trusty Commodore 16 out, my first computer, my childhood computer, and it took me a while to get one. I've currently got two, but that's a different story. One's in the process of being uh, repaired. And I know it's not the best system in the world, it's not the most powerful, it's not got the best games, but it always have a special place in my heart for being the first one I had that I owned that was mine. And I remember spending hours coding out of basic books and buying all the budget games from Mastertronic and stuff like that with my pocket money. So I really wanted to future-proof it as well as give it a few little um, modern upgrades so that it can compete with other systems in the retro world that are currently getting some game releases. Now, although it's not as big as, say, the Commodore 64 scene, there are quite a few people um, coding new games for the TED machine. Cytronic is a company that does quite a few of these games, and there's a lot of homebrew stuff and, and all sorts of stuff. Whereas in the past with commercial games on the Commodore 16 and Plus 4, they were mostly focused on the Commodore 16 to get the lowest hanging fruit, because these were commercial releases back in the day. Um, what's happening now is with uh, homebrew coders and new modern games, people are, tend to be coding for the Plus 4 because you can get RAM upgrades for the Commodore 16, and that's what I've actually done. Um, I've just, over Christmas, ordered um, a little uh, gadget that I'm hoping is going to solve a lot of issues. And once I get this installed, I should be able to play all the Plus 4 um, games from back in the day, as well as the new games. I've put off doing the RAM upgrade for the Commodore 16 because the sort of the cheapest way to do it is to literally solder more chips on or replace certain chips, socket them and solder more on cut a trace, that sort of stuff. And you know me, if, I've, if there's an easier way to do something, I'd rather do that. And recently, a couple of people have been making little fit on boards that will literally, no soldering required, that will um, give you the RAM, 64K RAM, which would be the same as the Plus 4, on a Commodore 16, without messing around with the traces and cutting traces and replacing chips. And this is one such example. I will put a link in the uh, in the description regarding this. But um, this is a you can see that it's a slot on replacement for the RAM. Is it focusing in? You basically remove the TED chip. You place that in the socket and then you pop the TED chip on top and in theory and there's even a little switch there so if you want to disable the 64k it'll do 16k. Uh, in theory this will give me 64k RAM and it's also using modern um, one modern SRAM chip so it should be nice and stable and nice and uh, reliable. And the gentleman I got this from who's from Italy kindly sent me a couple of extra chips. Now, he's put numbers on them, so I'm gonna to have to check out where these are gonna go. And he says that these are more reliable, you know, modern equivalent, more reliable, uh, less, I think they use less power, less heat, that sort of stuff. So I shall investigate where these go. And that was very kind of him. I didn't pay for these, I only paid for this. This was in the under 30 pounds for this, and it's a slot of replacement, it's a no brainer. So let's go ahead and pop these in and see what these are. Right, so we've got the C16 here, right, ready to uh, open up. So let's do that first. There's only three screws. Right, I've had a look about these these chips, and they seem looks like they're replacement ROM chips that are 
C16 specific that will, uh, I'm assuming, have the basic and all that on. So that'll be interesting. And they are labelled with codes, so hopefully I'll be able to figure out where they go. Right, let's get that off. We can dispense with the keyboard. So that's the TED there. I'm hoping, because my TED, my chips are heat sink, they've got heat sinks on. I'm hoping that this is going to fit uh, and the TED is going to be, uh, um, will fit over the top with the heat sink and not interfere with the keyboard. Otherwise, I'll have to get a different type of heat sink that's a bit lower. Right, so I've got one of these cheap and nasty chip pullers. To be honest, Sometimes it's just a lot easier just to use a screwdriver very carefully, especially if you've got heat sinks on, because sometimes it just doesn't grasp it. So let's remove the TED carefully. There we go. Make sure we don't bend any pins. Put you down there a minute, TED. Right, so in theory, this is a simple, Let's pop in this straight on. Oh, bent pins. Must have been bent in transit. Oh, dear, dear. Right, let me get some pliers and hopefully I can salvage that. And he had, it was fairly well packaged, but I will mention this. I'm hoping this doesn't break. At the end of the day, I can replace that. Oh, I think I've been lucky. And it's not moved too much. I've moved it back. Right, okay. So let's see. See if it'll fit in. Right, so it should just right down. Hoping the bent pin hasn't caused a problem. I can't really see where it's going. I might have to remove the CPU. I think we are in. That is in. And it's set to 64. Now Ted can go, hopefully, into, back into, nicely into here. Yep, I think he's sat in. Right, so that should be all there is to it for the uh, the RAM. Let's check these chips out. Let's see what we've got. Right, so they are labeled. So we've got one chip that is labeled 318006 and the other one's 318004. Ah, 318004. 318006, oh yeah, so that's handy. So it's just replacing these two. So I believe they are the uh, the basic ROM and, and stuff like that. So let's uh, let's do that as well while we're here. They are, he did say they aren't, you don't require, they don't require changing, but apparently they run cooler. So if it gives me more stability, why not? Let's pop that on there. So that is 38004 and this is 8006, pop it on the back of there. Or actually, I can put it in this. Pop 
that one in there. Right, right, that's all in. We'll give it a quick test. I'm not going to, uh, I won't screw it up, you know, <laughs> he says, and I'm in more ways than one. But what I want to do is I want to pop the keyboard back on. I won't screw the case up just in case there's any issues. three screws so I may as well just pop that back on and give it a test. Okay now for the big moment is it as simple as just popping that replacement PCB in on top of the TED chip uh, are we gonna get the result we want? All right. Will you look at that? Right so we have got Commodore Basic 3.5 with six out. Yeah, it's got the 64K there. Look, brilliant. Let's see if we can run something. I don't. Not sure if I've got any. Uh, I've got my tap we know here. Let's see. What's a uh, icicle works is a 64K, isn't it? Let's have a look. Icicle works. 1985 Commodore. Right. I'm sure Icicle Works is 64k. Right, let's try. I might be imagining things, but I think it's improved the picture as well. There's not as much distortion. I was getting a bit of interference with, with. Uh, it could be my imagination, but the picture does look cleaner. Right, it's loading icicle works. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, Icicle Works is a 64k game. Ah, I died. It's working nicely. Well, I'm very pleased. That is a great solution for fans love the Commodore 16 and plus four TED machines like I am. It's probably my favorite 8-bit because it was the one I had. And this is gonna allow me to explore so much more that I couldn't explore back in the day when I was 10, 10 or 12 when I, when I had it originally. So I'm so chuffed. Um, I will leave a link to this particular gentleman's eBay page because uh, he's, you know, as I said, I paid for this. I didn't, it's not a freebie or anything like that, but he was very communicative, very helpful, you know, and um, 
it, I'm very pleased with uh, with how it's come out. You know, the picture is probably my imagination, but it even looks it looks better. There's less seems to be less interference on the on the on the screen or anything, anything like that. So I'm very very pleased. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this system now that I've I've got access to the entire. I'll have access to the entire capabilities of the, the TED machine. So uh, stay tuned for some more videos and some more game reviews. Please make sure to check the links in the description. There's links to my social media. There's links on how you can support the channel. And like I said, there'll be links to, to these little, um, little add-ons as well. Right, thank you very much. And until next time, see you later.